Hey, what is going on guys? In this video, I'm giving you a demonstration of some software tips and tricks for the Samsung Galaxy Tab S 10.5 inch tablet. Now, this is the Wi-Fi only version. And uh, what I'm going to be doing is just going straight into the demonstration of the software features because there's a lot to go through. And I'm going to go into in precise detail of uh, like wasting time because there's a lot to go through. Believe me when I say that because that's what kind of what you should expect from Samsung devices. So with that said, let's get straight into it. Okay, so I'm going to be sticking with the exclusive TouchWiz features. I'm going to be ignoring uh, a lot of the generic Android stock features. So we'll start with the display because that's where a good chunk of them start off. Now one of the things you have here is Smart State, which basically allows you to leave the screen on as long as you're looking at it, if it's checkmarked. If you look away, the screen will turn off. I have yet to make this work. I could never get it to work for me. It's actually kind of a disappointment. Moving along, what you have is Screen Mode, which basically allows you to choose some preset settings for the screen. Now the screen is super amyloid. It has a very high resolution of 2560 by 1600, which is above 1080p. So Super Amyloid also consumes less power and it gives you a lot of color pop and punch. Now adaptive display, what it basically does is try to adapt the display automatically depending on what app you're using without the user noticing too much. So if you're reading text in Google Play, it'll have one type of setting done for you. And if you switch all of a sudden to your gallery with you know pictures that have a lot of color, it'll try to punch colors out a lot more. Some preset settings are cinema, photo, and basic. Personally, I recommend just using an adaptive display and it works fantastic. Now, reading mode, for example, when you turn it on, basically allows you to adjust your reading comfort for certain apps. For example, here I have Playbooks. And what I've done is, when I have a re reading mode on, I notice that the white background actually kind of turns more of a uh, beige tint, kind of mimicking real paper, you could say. When I turn reading mode off, I notice that the background here is pure white. And of course, you'll notice that only Playbooks is there, but you actually have the option to add additional apps by pressing this pencil mark here. So if you download, say, Kindle Books or whatever, Amazon Books. Of course, there's Auto Adjust Screen Tone, which basically saves power. Depending on what type of image or what you're looking at, it'll try to dim the display. Increasing touch sensitivity basically allows you to wear gloves if it's really cold. You can wear gloves and touch the screen. Now, I have tested this, um, and I do have to say it works pretty good for the most part. Now for the lock screen, this was included in the Samsung Galaxy S5, you do have a fingerprint reader, which basically allows you to add more additional security to your tablet. So basically in order to make it work, you just need to swipe it over eight times in a row. Now multi-window is actually on by default, uh, at least it wasn't my particular model and in the region I live in. What this basically allows you to do is use two apps at once. So if you're on any screen, whether it's rotated this way or this way, if you swipe from the right bezel over, you'll get you know a few apps listed. This basically allows you to use multi-window. And for example, if I wanted to use Chrome on one side, Google Chrome would open as a you know regular web browser. And let's say I wanted to use Google Maps at the same time. Well, I can do just that. So I can now browse the web on this side and use Google Maps on this side. Yet, you can also increase and decrease the size of whatever app you prefer. And of course, you can create your own pre-selected uh, multi-windows. So I've created one for Google Chrome and Google Maps. So as soon as I swipe it over, it'll automatically remember that preset and put both apps together. So the next thing to show is, of course, the notification drawer and the system settings menu, but I'd rather just show it from here. So you have some permanent fixtures here and they work pretty cool. The first, of course, is the brightness setting. And you'll notice that I set it pretty low on purpose because it adapts better for this camera so you guys can see the screen better. Usually I just leave it on medium and it's very bright. Of course, then you have notification sound volume. And then another thing called is S Finder. S Finder is basically a searching program built into the tablet. So if I were to type YouTube, for example, it'll not only search my app drawer for it, it'll search the internet for it. So you can see I get web results, uh, YouTube from there. The other permanent fixture sit in here is Quick Connect, which basically allows you to connect with certain devices. For example, here you have my PC, and just above that you have my Smart TV. Now what you'll notice here is that you have these preset settings up here, which allow you to quickly access, like say, turning Wi-Fi on and off very quickly. And of course, if you were to long press one of them, say Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, if you long press, you'll actually go into that system setting menu for that particular functions. You can actually customize whatever is here by tapping uh, this top right, on. When you tap it, you'll see a bigger list of what's available in your preset settings. If you tap this pen icon right after, 
from here you actually go back to the system settings menu and here you can actually adjust how you want to move certain icons you can move them uh, in priority order or you can just remove them from the list altogether moving along the next thing we have is toolbox which is kind of like a quick access toolbar as you see it just popped up over there so when I go back to the home screen you'll always notice that it's there and it kind of fades out so it doesn't obstruct your view of anything else then if I were to tap it basically allows you to access one of your quick settings apps so say for example the camera and then the camera is easily accessible and of course you can customize the apps available there's not many the whole point is to keep this list very short but you do have the ability to change and access what apps are available you can keep the list long you can keep it short so this is the keyboard you have it's fairly large even if you were to rotate it it takes up quite a bit of the screen but you can actually change the way the keyboard works and the style of it. So if you were to long press this settings, well if you just press this button quickly once, you go into the keyboard settings, which is not what I really want. But if you were to just simply hold and press it, you get a bunch of other menus. And what this basically does is allow you to change the keyboard style. So one is normal, which is what I have now. One is floating, which you can literally just float around the keyboard. And of course one is split. So you have two tiny keyboards here and you can move them around up and down. Of course, doing it again, you have emoticons. Here's your clipboard, which is obviously when you're copying and pasting something. And the last thing, of course, is swipe input. So what we can do is literally this. As you can see, I'm just swiping with my finger. And as you can see, it recognizes my handwriting pretty well. I typed in Babbling Willian for me. You can just buy a third-party stylus, a simple one from, say, eBay for like a dollar or something, and you can just use that function whenever you want. So what you guys are seeing now is a review of the Moto360 smartwatch. You can find a link to this video in the video description. I put it on my tablet just for demonstration purposes um, for you guys, because I want to demonstrate the smart pause features. So there's two ways to activate the smart pause features. One is to simply put your palm over the screen itself. Another is to be looking at the tablet itself. When you turn away, as I have right now, I'm not looking at it, it should have paused. And when I look back at it, it plays again. Looking away, pause, looking again, it should resume. So as you can see, um, it basically tries to use the front facing camera to look at your face and determine is the user watching the video right now? If they're not, I'm gonna turn off. But this doesn't work with say VLC media player. Um, it only works with the default video playing app. But one more cool thing I want to show you guys while I'm here is that you can actually pinch and zoom in a video. How awesome is that? That's pretty wicked, huh? And that function is actually activated under device, motion, mute pause. Another thing of course is swipe to capture. So basically you're literally swiping your hand from one bezel to another and it does a screen capture. Unfortunately, I activated multi-window by accident. So here's a cool little feature which uh, was pretty unique is one is under accessibility, under vision. Then if you go to magnification gestures and you turn it on, you can actually zoom in into almost anything else on the tablet. So if I triple tap anywhere, one, two, three, I have now zoomed into the text. I can move it around any part of the tablet I want, and I can actually pinch and zoom even further more if I wanted to. You can also turn on negative colors on and off instantly. You also have blocking mode, which will actually turn off notifications and alarms. Uh, you can have it set to always as long as blocking mode is activated, or you can have it set for a certain time, like say, for example, when you're sleeping. Then of course there's profiles, but with a bit of a unique twist. So as you can see, that's me. Uh, this is the default profile. You can add a new one, which has access to everything, or you can add a restricted profile, which basically only has a s access to a certain amount of settings of app. The next closest thing to users' profiles, of course, is private mode, which basically allows you to block certain um, stuff from, say, your gallery, for example. When you activate private mode, which of course needs some sort of security, like, say, a pin number or a swipe combination for the lock screen, you can actually move files to private mode so that the users can access no matter what without your pin or swipe gesture, whatever it may be. Now when it comes to changing the font, this isn't anything really exclusive to this tablet, but I might as well just show you guys because it's still a neat feature. And you can actually change the font style of whatever is displayed in the entire tablet. So right now I have default, so change it to Choco Cookie. Then I'll actually change the font in the entire tablet. And you guys should notice is that the font has changed here. It's changed within the widgets. And of course, you can always download more fonts if needed to. And I'll show you how to do that right now. If you just tap on font again, font style, and here if you press when it shows up, download. You have two power saving modes. 
Regular power saving mode basically just restricts the performance of the tablet, so it might be a little bit slower for certain apps and games. It might perform a little sluggish, but that's done on purpose. You can always turn it on and off if you want. Then of course it has the option to turn on grayscale, which turns everything black and gray and white, kind of, you know, gray colors. Then there's of course ultra power saving mode, which only allows you to use certain apps while this mode is activated and it gives you an estimation of how long your device will last and here it estimates at this rate right now it'll last 52.6 days if left in standby mode. Now I'm a fan of Samsung's top devices like I, I think they're fantastic but one of the biggest problems they have is their system settings menu is a giant cluttered mess. It's sometimes hard to find things in the system settings menu but there's a way to get around that by typing this magnification icon right here. Let's say I was looking for the battery. Let's say I want to see my battery stats, how much battery I've been using. I can actually search for battery. There is at the top result. I tap it and it'll take me straight into the battery. Having this internal search function is actually something that's going to be stock in Android L when it's released. Uh, I have done a demonstration of Android L. You can find a link to that video demonstration in the video description. So Samsung actually beat the punch to Google by including it in the Tab S, which is a great feature to have. Now in order to customize the lock screen, you have to have swipe enabled. So right now I have nothing. There's no lock screen. As soon as I press the power button, it'll just show up whatever is, whatever is the last thing I was looking at. So what I do is tap this and turn on swipe. Swipe is no security. It just basically means you can just swipe across the screen itself. Turn it back on. Just literally just swiping across and there it just turns on. But you want to customize it. So if you were to do, say, lock screen card, you can actually display things that are in your calendar. For example, maybe it's someone's birthday today in your contacts list. Well, it'll show that card on your lock screen. Then, of course, you have the clock widget options, which is always there. Um, you can choose to show the date not. And yes, you can enable app shortcuts if you wish. Turn it on, tap that, tap the plus. Let's just say you want to add Google Chrome. You notice that you can't add any more. You're actually limited on how much space you can use but you can always just change them around, swap one for another. So you're li limited to five, but it's still better than nothing. And of course, you can always put your owner information. Of course, you have the unlock effect. So if I were to just do brilliant cut, it's just something simple. If I were to do ripple, for example, because you've seen brilliant cut already was a default, you have this nice rippling effect. So when you add those apps to the lock screen, you'll notice them show up here in small icons. You'll notice a little card here at the bottom. You'll actually get more depending on how much you use the magazine app in the tablet itself. So the way it works is if you go to the far right, there's nothing. If you just keep swiping over to the left, eventually you'll reach the magazine section. It's basically a newsfeed app. That's all it really is. And as you'll notice, for example, I have the sports activated. When you select a category for the first time, syncing will take a while. Uh, eventually it'll pick up and it's a pretty smooth for the most part. But what might people not know is that there is actually a remote control built into the tablet itself. It has an IR blaster. And as you can see, you can set up your remote control with your TV. You can find a particular model, play around with it, and until you find a remote setting that works with your TV. And of course, you have a whole bunch of other stuff here. And if you swipe over one more time, you have the email feed. If you were to activate an account in the email app, your calendar, uh, documents. And of course, if you go here in the home screen, notice a little folder. If you tap that, it'll actually open like a directory uh, to see all the files located in the storage of your tablet. On the bottom right corner, this is where you open your app drawer. Nothing too fancy, it's just your typical average stuff. Now if I were to do something like say gallery, if I were to say long press and hold on it and drag it up to hide, it'll actually hide from my app drawer. You'll see the gallery is gone. In order to get it back, if I go there, I have to do show hidden app. Tap gallery, done, and it's now back in my app drawer. Of course, you can also customize it. Right now I have an alphabetical order, which is what I prefer, but you can always change that to customizable grids. So you can actually move them around however you wish. And perhaps one of the most coolest things available, which might not be practical for a lot of people, is called side sync. What I'm basically able to do is control my Samsung Galaxy S5 here, as you can see it's located here, control it from the Galaxy Tab S tablet. And I can actually control the phone from the tablet, and of course I can make it full screen. So I'm literally mirroring and controlling whatever is happening on the phone itself. Now there's one thing that doesn't work as far as I can tell is the camera. You can actually make it as a remote point and shoot, which would have been really sick. Like for example, for to change the volume of the Galaxy S5, that music is actually hearing, the, the ringtone is actually coming from the phone not from the tablet itself. Settings menu for the camera itself, you have a whole bunch of options. You can pick the megapixel 
size, uh, picture stabilization, burst shots, phase detection. You have some other cool features like say for example um, voice control. If I turn that on and if I were to say now cheese it took a picture. It was a little bit slow because you had to get the flash going and focusing but again it's a tablet you wouldn't expect great results. Of course you have the front facing camera mode which basically includes, hey, I look like a bum, yay! Anyway, which includes a beauty face um, special feature, which is apparent and you can find it easily in the Galaxy S5 as well. It tries to get rid of, like, say, blemishes. It tries to make your skin a little bit softer. Um, I'm not noticing it with this tablet because, again, the camera performance isn't as great as a phone. But with the Galaxy S5, I can notice that it tries to smoothen your skin. So I hope you guys enjoyed this software tips and tricks video for the Samsung Galaxy Tab S 10.5 inch tablet. Overall, it is a fantastic tablet in terms of features. You can find a link to the review in the video description. And hopefully I can help you decide if it's worth buying this tablet or not. If you want to see like other videos like a camera sample video or a gaming demo video, again, all the videos that you would need are in the video description. Be sure to check them out and I hope you guys enjoy. And if you found this video useful, be sure to check out my Facebook, Google Plus, Twitter links also in the video description. Hit the like button, it does help. Subscribe and thanks for watching.